I gave a talk on cellular senescence, particularly as it relates to skin care. Now, senescent cells are essentially zombie cells. They have not gone through apoptosis, but their telomeres are so short that they can't really replicate anymore either. So they are just kind of there in your skin uh, and in the rest of your body. Uh, and unfortunately, they can be really inflammatory because they release a secretary profile of cytokines that are very pro-inflammatory. It's called the senescent associated secretary, secretory profile. Senescent associated secretory profile. There's some thought that the real senescent cells in your skin that cause much of the damage are melanocytes. And in fact, there is some data to show that when keratinocytes are cultured with melanocytes, especially senescent melanocytes, keratinocytes themselves become senescent. So just like zombies, right, if you have a senescent cell in your skin, other cells will become senescent as well, leading to more inflammation and the aging process, and that's called inflammaging. In addition, as I said, senescent cells are anywhere. You can get leaky gut syndrome, which can lead to even more inflammation. So it unfortunately is a spiraling downward trend of aging that we are hoping to slow down with both senolytics, which are compounds, medicines, supplements that help to remove senescent cells, as well as senostatics, which are similar compounds, medicines, supplements that don't necessarily remove senescent cells, but they help slow down the nefarious dealings of those senescent cells. As I said, senescence is a natural part of the aging process. And one of the ways we, we overcome senescence is with antioxidants. But if we overcome the ability of our own skin to remove and reduce senescent cells, that's when we see accelerated aging itself. In the lecture, I went through some different supplements that can address some of the pathways of senescence and aging. These include spermidine, physotin, resveratrol, for example. I also discussed the effects of uh, metformin on the aging process. And really, we don't have any inhuman data here. It's really in vitro data or animal data. But there was, a, there was a study looking at metformin in those patients with type 2 diabetes compared to age match controls, showing that those patients who took metformin actually had a longer lifespan. And metformin worked much better than the sulfonylureas as well. In fact, it increased lifespan by over 35%. So there's some talk about with the medications that we already have, looking at them through the new lens of anti-aging. I also went through some of the new topical medications and or skincare creams that we have available that address senescence. One is fibroblast-induced growth factors, uh, which is, again, in a compound that we already are, are using as skincare. And the company stained for senescent cells, both from in vitro data as well as biopsies uh, of in vivo data, showing that the number of senescent cells decreased after 8 to 12 weeks of use. The company went even further, however, looking at the hallmarks of aging, which, for example, is stem cell exhaustion and proteostasis and DNA methylation. All of those markers they looked at and showed as we decrease the number of senescent cells, we also uh, improve the hallmarks of aging. So it's really interesting now that skincare companies are starting to focus not just on the clinical signs of aging, the wrinkles, fine lines, hyperpigmentation, dyschromia, sallowness, sagging, those kinds of things, but now starting to address aging in terms of cellular senescence, which is really where it should be. So that was the gist of my lecture on cellular senescence as it pertains to skincare and whole body nutrition.